Okay, so I haven't made a video in about two weeks, I think. Uh, could have been more, could have been less. But I feel like I have to make one today because it's all about antinatalism and apologies. So the other day on Facebook, I wrote this question. Um, you know, I tend to jump ahead with things. I tend to assume everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm not really the most knowledgeable guy out there. Um, I tend to have very narrow focuses um, and yeah, so I, I get, I kind of go down the rabbit hole, if you want to call it that, and uh, I kind of forget that people are looking at these things I post from different perspectives. And with antinatalism, it's, it's such uh, a heavy, loaded subject that you can kind of get, un get under people's skin sometimes, but maybe not in a way you intended. Um, so I posted this thing the other day, it's, a, it's an example, really. Um, it says, if you can tell through genetic testing that a child of two parents would have a severe disability, I think it would be agreed that such a life would not be worth living. Yet, if such a child is born, its life is now considered worth living. What's up with that? So it, it was more of an example posed as a question and, you know, wanting feedback on, you know, how do you figure out this like philosophical kind of puzzle, right? Um, although for me, I, I feel like it's it's figured out. I just I just wanted input from other people, um, and uh, yeah, so it kind of came across as being kind of you know anti-parent, um, anti having kids as antinatalism is, but it, it kind of came across as blaming parents for for you know giving their children these horrible lives, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I can understand how people could see it that way, but uh, it, it wasn't meant that way. So. To demonstrate what I'm trying to get across, though, I could give you a different example uh, posed as a question dealing with the same philosophical underpinning, which is the, the non-identity problem. So I, I'm actually stealing this from a user on one of the antinatalist sites, um, and I was having the same discussion with him, and he said, okay, well, let's put it this way. Say there were a group of people breeding and birthing um, a bunch of people that were going to be enslaved for the rest of their lives. They, you know, were giving birth to a bunch of people that were going to enslave for the rest of their lives. That would be bad, right? Yes, that would be horrible. That's unthinkable. Like, you know, it, that would just be like disgusting, right? So what if those, what if we didn't do that and we did not birth people to become lifelong slaves? Isn't that better? Of course it's better. It's better that we don't birth people and enslave them for the rest of their lives. But who is that better for? You see, so you see, like, that's the question. So you see what I'm saying? Like, like, who is that better for? Like, those people who were never born. So who are we saying that's better for? So that's, that's essentially the non-identity problem. Um, you know, the, the idea that you can make decisions that could be good for someone, even if those people don't exist. Um, and you run into that problem all the time. Um, now, David, I, I don't want to get into the whole antinatalist thing, but I mean, you know, you could, what, what those types of questions mean to demonstrate is that, without getting into the whole thing, is that life is suffering. Life is suffering. And this is not a new idea. You can find this in Buddhism. You can find this in Hinduism. Um, you can find this in uh, various Christian sects. Um, you know, going back all the way down to, the, to Greek philosophy, you could find that life is suffering is not a new idea or something that is just pulled out of somebody's butt. Like, you know, life is suffering. That's, that's what it is. And, and I think in um, Buddhism, they call it Dukkha or Dukkha. I don't know how you pronounce it. But in a political realm, you could also see that as recently as when AOC was elected, right? She, she was coming at this from an environmental perspective, a very left-leaning kind of person. And I, I do believe antinatalism is a very left-leaning philosophy, um, if only just for the environmental movement or the, the, the things that are said in the way of uh, mitigating envi environmental uh, degradation. So AOC said that, you know, people should consider whether or not they, they want to have kids anymore, right? And I think she was kind of leaning on the side of saying that the world is going to be such a horrible place that, environmentally speaking, that we should not have children anymore. So, I mean, that comes across as kind of putting a burden on parents as well, right? But, you know, it's AOC and she's 
fun loving and she's left and like you know she's down with the establishment and all this stuff so everybody loves that right like everybody loves that aoc said that should we even have kids anymore because that's you know that's uh, that's the real shit right i think antinatalism has something to do with climate change and the climate crisis but i but i don't think antinatalism relies completely on the climate change crisis to to find its footing um but like i said i don't want to get into the whole thing um so what I'm trying to convey here is these ideas about not giving birth aren't meant to blame anyone. And I think as, as, as recently as up to the 90s and the 2000s, you can't necessarily blame anybody for not being aware that antinatalism is an option because it's just a philosophy that has not really gained steam, even though it has a, his, a historical uh, story and narrative, but it, has, it hasn't never really gained steam. So, except for really recently, but, you know, um, so, oh, I lost my point. Um, yeah, you can't blame anyone really, right? Like you can offer examples and things like that, but I can understand how my post asking about, you know, genetic defects in, in, in children that are yet to be born could be the, 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 the burden of the parents, like, you know, to, to decide whether to have this kid or not. And then we got into a whole things about a whole thing about Down syndrome and how you can detect Down syndrome Down Down syndrome, um, and and you know some feathers got ruffled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like the, the, it's just an example of the non-identity problem. Um, but I mean, antinatalism does talk about childbirth, so I can understand how people are seeing this from various perspectives and getting kind of maybe even offended. Um, but there's also you know there's also Facebook groups and there's tons of articles written written in the Star and the Atlantic and. Uh, you know, um, I can't remember where else, but major news sources that uh, that talk about parents that regret having children. They don't. It doesn't mean that they don't love their children. It just means that they love their children. They just wish they had never had kids because they wanted to pursue other things. And women, especially, fall into this category of being pressured into having kids. Right? Like their their parents want to be grandparents, and the, the husbands want to be fathers, and like you know, so they they end up kind of being pigeonholed into like motherhood. Um, some women feel that way. I'm not saying all, but I'm saying there's a there's a good number of them that feel that way. Um, I think even from a feminist perspective, you know, uh, childbirth is something that may may have been uh, that 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 may have seen women liberated from um, you know traditional roles and things like that. So I, I there's a like I said, I think this is a huge left leaning issue, but I can understand how people can get offended by it. It's a very right wing conservative stance to basically say that, well, it is intended for women to have children and that is what women should do. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very it's a very right wing kind of stance to and I'm not saying this absolutely, but I'm saying it's a very right wing stance in a, in a fuzzy way to be anti antinatalism. Um, and, you know, like I, there's different permutations of antinatalism. Um, you know, you think about abortion, you think about, um, you know, birth control, all these things prevent people from having children and we do it all the time. So as much as somebody might think antinatalism is a disgusting idea because it, 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 it implies genocide. I know where people get that from. It implies genocide or whatever. Um, but I mean, it's, it, it, when it comes to issues such as not giving birth to children, that's also a very right wing um, agenda when it comes to abortion and, and birth control and things like that, because right wing uh, uh, followers would want to stop abortion and stop birth control and things like that. So it's, you know, on a political level, it, it goes on, on both those sides. Um, but, you know, I love my mother. You know, I love my mother. I don't blame my mother for having me. I mean, on a personal basis, like I don't I don't walk around with hate in my head or my heart for my mother or my parents or anything like that. Like, I, I just don't. I don't. But I mean, I, I do see antinatalism as a, a sound philosophical uh, framework for birth and for the for for existence and for human life. Um, I do see that. Anyway, that's that's all I want to say. Uh, yeah, bye.